Hello, and welcome to Looking Up, A View from the Valley. My name is Mark Weissman, and thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any comments on the show, feel free to provide feedback, questions, or suggestions to lookingupvalley at gmail.com, or check out our Facebook page and dedicated website. Thank you very much. Today, we're actually filming from the Valley United Way, which is located in the, Laf the former Lafayette School on Grove Street in Shelton. And we're joined by several members of the Valley Council for Health and Human Services, uh, including Victor Pittman. Thank yeah. you for coming, Victor. Appreciate it. And your role here for the council is? I'm a vice chairman. Vice chairman, okay. And Pam Maudie. And your role? I am the chair of the council. Oh, excellent, excellent. And next we have Heidi Zavatoni Veth, is it? That's yes, you got it. That's okay. right. And I'm the coordinator of the council. Oh, good. Okay. And Marilyn Comack? I am the first chair. Oh, excellent. So That's I've good. been around a while. Okay. And your current role now is? Uh, right now I'm on the executive committee. Good. And all the past chairs. Uh, join the executive. Oh, really? And that's okay. how we make up the... Oh, that's good. That's, that kind of reminds me, we had the Rotary Club on yeah. before, and they have, when you get elected president, you're, you know, yeah. coming president, past, current president, and then past president, so you actually serve multiple terms, even though you're technically... Right, and president. then we have that's at good. large, so we have a broad... Oh, good, good. And, la and last but certainly not least, we have Pam Lorenzo, who is chair of the Early Childhood Task Force. Yes, right. the chair of the Early Childhood Task oh, Force. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. And, and Pam, I want to thank you, too. You were one of our, the first guests on the show where we did a, a public service announcement for kindergarten registration. And I know it, was, it got a lot of good feedback. We got some, ex hopefully, more registration than may, you may have gotten. Absolutely. So that's good. And you also do a, I believe there's a kindergarten registration event you hold at Warsaw Park. Yes, we do. Yes, the Play and Learn Fair. Oh, yes, good. Which okay. we just had in May. Oh, Highly excellent. successful. Oh, great. Yes. That's good. That's good. And it's important because registration, I guess, technically is in the in the fall, but to get people done early on is, is a good thing. Earlier the better. Right, exactly. Yes. So good. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, to, for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, it's it's nice because it, it kind of bodes well. I, I, we must have mentioned it the Valley Council, I don't know how many times on the show already, um, from the time, you know, Jack Walsh and Joe Pagliaro and from the United Way's perspective. I mean, there's, and my understanding is they are the fiduciary for the, the health and human services. Right. So there's a huge connection there. I mean, we're filming from, you know, where they're located and, you know, viewers will see some of the murals on the wall. So so there's that. But the other, the other reason I've been very high on having you on the show is, you know, t we, and we will discuss this, is the Valley Cares report that the council puts out. Literally, just flipping through it, it seemed like it was almost like an agenda for what to cover on this show, because you talk about, you know, what goes on in the community, and how many people, you know, go to the concerts on the green or the library, just uses of sources, things that, honestly, I'm, I'm very curious as to how you get that data, and we can certainly talk about that, you, could, you know, because you can sort of get rough estimates, but it seemed very detailed, which I was really impressed, and it really, you could literally do a half hour show on every single topic and really get into the nuts and bolts of how those things, but, you know, at least for here, we'll try to cover just kind of overview mm -hmm. of what it does, but um, I guess the, probably the best way, I think, from a viewer's perspective is to talk about how the council got started, what's the history, where it, where it was, where it is now, and maybe where it hopes to be, and, you know, Marilyn, if you want to start with that, that would be great. I think it's important to understand the history because we really came ar came together around what we had identified was a problem in the valley and that was around substance abuse. Mm -hmm. And a group of a very interested um, people wanted to decrease or prevent substance abuse. Mm -hmm. So we did come together and um, formed the Valley Substance Abuse Action Council and then and that's otherwise known as VSAC, right? Right. That's, okay. And Pam is still <laughs> involved in the director of that. Okay. And then also the state, at the same time, the state was trying to redistrict, and they wanted to split the valley mm -hmm. up, okay. and we didn't want that. So right. we went to Hartford, mm -hmm. and we were able to influence the decision, and that didn't happen. Oxford kind of went uh, toward Waterbury, but they said no, they wanted to relate to the valley. So informally that's how we started. Then uh, we decided we really, it would be great to come together as a council. So in 1993, uh, we, um, Jack was, you know, reminding sure. me Jack Walsh at sure. the Valley United Way, uh, that we sent out a formal letter to the nonprofits and that we have others like council governments, we have Griffin Hospital, we have several. So if you can clarify, what, so in other words, what is, what is the Valley Council? Somebody hears that term 
it, I guess my sense is it's, it's a group of nonprofits, but so, so why nonprofits versus maybe nonprofits and for profits? In other words, what, what, about, what kind of defines the council? Well, I think what defines the council is that we are a group of nonprofits coming together to help solve problems. I mean, we, one of the strengths is that we're able to identify a problem and then all come together around that mm -hmm. to coordinate mm -hmm. together and mm -hmm. not to be competitive or uh, territorial, mm -hmm. and we just leave that at the door, and mm -hmm. we all come and say, okay, if it's early childhood, if it's developing a mental health crisis team, right. which we did, right. Leadership Valley started, you know, we're just going to really um, solve the problem together, I and I think point. that's the impact. That's a good point, because the, I was at the first council meeting I was at, which is when we basically, I basically first started the show, and I mentioned to Jack, I mentioned to Heidi, and honestly, I, my, my expectation was, you know, you have this typical meeting where you have, you know, th up to up 30, or now it's like 40, I believe, right? 40, 40 members, so theoretically, you could have 40 directors or people right. representing each of the council. So I thought, you know, I'd be in a chair off to the side, and it was like, oh, by the way, there's this show, and I figured after the meeting, I would speak to people, you know, kind of on their way out, or if there was, you know, refreshments or something, and the next thing I know, you're, oh, you have a couple PowerPoint slides, why don't you talk about it? And it was sort of on the fly letting me talk about it, which was incredibly nice, for one. And two, it actually created, it was almost like a networking event, because literally after, right after the meeting, or even later on, because I had given my email and phone number, you know, I got calls from, you know, Kevin Bishop of the Who's a Town Council, and Pam and I talked about, you know, doing this public service announcement. So, so it was just this, it was a great way. I, I couldn't think of a better way since the goal for the show is to be about nonprofits, community. I mean, this was like hitting the jackpot as far, jackpot as, far as doing that. Um, so, so I, I, and you also mentioned the idea that it's it's a very sharing, yeah. open. I mean, I've I've worked, you know, as an engineer in corporate, more capitalistic America for 25 years. I had never been in a meeting where, first of all, you go around the room and everyone just does their own little, you know, here's what here's what's coming up, and it's just, and it's a, it's just a very, like I said, very collaborative effort because you know if you think about it, you're all working towards it's nonprofit. So right there, right there, your, your mindset is about giving and not necessarily making money and, you know, there's, what's the bottom line and all that. So I just, it's just the people who are going to be involved with a nonprofit, I would think, fundamentally, are going to have that personality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one thing. But then to actually see it in action in these meetings was just, it was just amazing. And I just, you know, so again, that's one of the reasons you know, I'm glad we were able to get this, you know, get the show together. Right. But go ahead. And the, and the Valley um, United Way has been so supportive. Like you mentioned, they were the fiduciary when mm -hmm. we got our... We, we did membership dues because we had to support <laughs> the right. council. Right. And um, they became the fiduciary of that. They've given us um, a lot of in-kind services. Mm -hmm. So it's been very, it's been a good partnership with the Valley uh, United Way. And now when you went to, like with that redistricting, you went up to Hartford. Right. I mean, here you were, you weren't really a, a group yet, or, or were you? So, so how informal. Did, right, well, if you're informal, I'm thinking you're going up to Hartford, you're dealing with the bigwigs. Right. How did you get, how to, what kind of credibility were you able to convey to, to have them listen to you? How well, because you? we had um, people from Griffin Hospital. We had, oh, okay. yeah, we had a, a very strong group of providers, as well as, I believe at that time, maybe the Council of Government representation. Oh, okay. okay. We had economic development. Mm -hmm. We um, worked with our legislators because they didn't want to see it sure. happen either. Sure. And so sure. we were just able to. That's true. So, so we, you were speaking on behalf of your own, but really redistricting would affect things outside the council. Right. So yeah, that's good. Right. So you kind of have a right. unified effort that way. Um, I, it's from a historical perspective or mission, if any of you want to jump in and kind of add to what, you know, what you, where you see things going or, or even just some accomplishments that the the council has done so far? Um, the mission of the Valley Council is that we work together to improve the health and quality of life in the Valley community and its residents by identifying community needs, developing culturally responsive services, and um, working with our membership and our partner organizations um, to deliver those services. So what Marilyn alluded to before is many of the initiatives are really true collaborations, whether it's there's a funding opportunity that's coming into the area. We'll work together to make sure that funding comes to benefit the residents okay. of the Valley community for a need that we've already identified. Can you um, give an example of that? Um, I could use, you know, the previous example with VSAC was created because mm -hmm. of the need, but um, another example is the AIDS program. Oh, okay. Um, for folks with HIV and AIDS, it came to originally the health department, and then we all worked together to see where it naturally fits. Another one would be the Early Childhood Task Force Collaborative, um, as well as some of the new programs at 
the Parent Child Resource Center as mm-hmm, well around mm-hmm. children's needs that right. kind of sparked from the early childhood task force where we're seeing these needs or the Valley Cares Report where we're seeing these needs and then these opportunities um, happen to come up where we either seek the funding or funding is coming available mm-hmm. where we're able to um, better bring it to our communities to benefit the residents that live here. And it's good that you mentioned the health district. I mean, Karen Spargo's right. on the, mm-hmm. and Amy yeah, Shields, we're both here today. They've already appeared on our show. Mm-hmm. And and plus, you know, so you, so in a way, by setting up the council the way it is, oh, we got this issue who, you know, you, a lot of times, sometimes you probably, I mentioned this to Jack, I remember we talked about like, what if it doesn't fit with someone? But you got now 40, the odds are you're going to find at least one or at least who it makes sense to to get to gear it around and then right. you know say okay if you need a subcommittee or things like that but you know you've got this you pretty much hit every mm-hmm. quality you know aspect of life really in the valley with all the different nonprofits so that I would think that would make it a lot easier and it's, the council can be seen in many ways as an incubator as well because a lot of times the issue will arise here and then again the the council we only have a very limited part-time staff of, of Heidi mm-hmm. but a lot of time there is a natural fit with that agency right. and then the subcommittees form and while we're all still collaborating it's more natural for one agency right. to take the lead so a lot of times we have the idea but then it needs to get funneled D- off yep, exactly. to the appropriate place. That makes sense and then they can focus on it and they, they maybe already have experience with something like that and so yeah that makes a lot of sense. But that agency also then has the input and the collaboration exactly. built in of all kinds of people, mm-hmm. and maybe Pam can speak to this, but I'm thinking of, you know, Jack talked about, this was probably a couple of years ago where there was some money available for outreach to pregnant and parenting families in need in the state, and they were interested in the Valley, and he said he made one, you know, he had to make one set of phone calls or one email, wow. and a group of people came together over at Team in Derby. Right. There were probably 20 people right away to talk about how could we do this in the Valley, who would mm-hmm. do it, and I don't know, maybe you could talk about what resulted. And, and it, it really happened. We got the money in the absolutely, Valley. Absolutely, absolutely. did get the monies. And I think it's important to Mark, just to talk about a little bit about what Pam, I'll allude to what Pam had mentioned about the subcommittees and the task forces. Mm-hmm. 15 years ago, we found a need um, through the Valley Council to make sure that our families are hooked into appropriate services and that's how what is now known as the Early Childhood Task Force um, has come about. We used to be the birth through eight subcommittee of the Valley Council (laughs) and as years went by, um, myself being the chair even back then, looking for funding, looking for those you know supporters and even the consumers to aid us in, in gaining some more perspective on what is happening with our families right. you know, in the valley. And since then, we've come up with um, community plans for Insomnia, Derby, and oh, Shelton, wow. Wow. which we are now in the implementation stages of, mm-hmm. making sure that everything that we put into that is going out into the communities. And as Heidi had mentioned too, monies had, uh, are, and are still coming into the valley right. happily. Um, you know, to include some more home visiting, um, oh, you know, programs yep. that we're offering to our families. And Sonia and Derby has um, a great one. There's the Nurturing Families Network program. There's Child First. There's Valley Kids Belong. And again, all, all of right. these came because, you know, what are the needs of the Valley? You know, where can we best dispense our support and our efforts into our Valley families? And you mentioned Team too, who again, they're, they're the uh, Team Early Ed has already been on the show as well. And there's the Valley, the, the, the Family Resource Center that's in the Team right. Building. Do they? How do? I mean, the Early Childhood Task Force. Do you kind of collaborate with? We do absolutely, absolutely. And that all came about also because of talks through the ECTF, the Early Childhood Task Force. You know, again, what are the needs? How can we, you know, best serve our families? Oh, that's good. That's good. And what's nice too is then you you also work with other city agencies that maybe not like the libraries. I mean, I know Kathy Williams is on the council, but I could see where there might be things that are just more mm-hmm. municipal, mm-hmm. but yet since you're covering the valley and it's like and and or supplement the schools, for example, right? Exactly. There's there's the school programs and there's obviously counseling and and leadership programs things like that. But maybe for whatever reason, because of you know resource issues, you're able to pick up things at the schools and then you can kind of work together that way. So that's that's a really good idea. And speaking about the municipalities, I mean they've been very forthcoming also in funding for us. So oh, the municipalities, um, the William Casper Graustein Memorial Fund right. funded a lot of our regional efforts mm-hmm. for children in the valley, mm-hmm. which has been great. Yeah. That really sparked, um, you know, us being able to do sure. what we can do: play and learn fair, yeah. et cetera. So yes, and team and and United Way Valley United Way has always been a, oh, yeah. 
a fiduciary. And, um, the community place. foundation, I would imagine, was absolutely Valley and uh, New Haven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. There's both. Yes. That's good. Um, and the other thing you mentioned too about getting from municipal, the, if you had gone just to Derby or just to Oxford, then you're limited to that. But as soon as you make it a regional effort, mm -hmm. well then, if you if every municipality, then you've got six municipalities helping out as opposed to just the one. Absolutely. So then it becomes, it's less burden on the taxpayer in that particular town, and then you, but meanwhile, you get the benefits of, you know, all six or seven towns, so that's that's really good. So I just wanted to add another bit yeah, sure. that I've uh, been able to experience myself is that I'm always looking for ideas of how to reach the community and also how to fund your services. But mm -hmm. when you're in a collaborative, you're with other agencies mm -hmm. who are dealing with the exact same obstacles. Oh and yeah, it really comes. Uh, it's beneficial to just socialize, to be of support, to get new ideas. I mean, if you were starting a nonprofit, mm -hmm. you know, if I was to say to someone, comes, I'm looking to start, I would say, come to this meeting. I mean, you basically have 30 or 40 mentors that mm -hmm. people, you know, watch how they interact, first of all. But then, you know, if you develop relationships, like you said, you might be able to then, you know, talk to people, email them or text them and get some, you know, along the way. Because especially if you've already been through it, if you've already developed a nonprofit, and you're looking to do that. I mean, I know like the libraries, not only in the Valley, but like Bridgeport, Easton Library, run these ongoing courses. It was at the uh, Greater Valley Chamber Expo that they had. Um, there was a booth where it's talking about some of these, how to start a nonprofit and, mm -hmm. you know, how to, and all these things. So you could supplement that with real world, you know, people who've done it as mm -hmm. opposed to just, you know, just something that's, that you, you know, learn as a textbook or things like that. So, okay. I think Victor makes a really good point though, because I've been with the council for five years and from the outset, I remember people within the group and people coming to visit from outside talking mm -hmm. about, wow, Everybody in this group, they talk to each other, they collaborate. Yeah, exactly. It's something, even though nonprofits may have the same motivation right. and the same kind of wonderful people elsewhere in the state, that to have this level of collaboration is something that is really remarkable. And it's usually we think about how useful it is for somebody coming from the outside. Right. For example, today we had at our meeting a representative from the Office of the Healthcare Advocate at the state right. Right. who felt like the Valley community was underutilizing their services mm -hmm. and to be able to come and in one presentation yeah. reach exactly. this number of people, you know, 30, 40 people who can then take it to their agencies, who will take it to their clients exactly. is remarkable. But I think what you're saying is that this is challenging work, especially in these times. And I think that people kind of look towards this as a practical resource right. for ideas and, and, and networking. But it's there's something deeper than that, I think, that happens too, that you get rejuvenated rejuvenated mm -hmm. by coming together with people who share some of right. your same commitments and, and concerns. Well, yeah. and, and that's something that's hard to capture. Oh, and I think it was yeah. Yeah. making a difference. I think yes. that's the yes. thing where yes. what Victor is saying is, you know, when we get together and we hear and we look back at our history and all the things that we've done, and we can honestly look and say we are making a difference right. to the Valley right. community. And I believe it was Jack who said, you know, the, yes, it's it's a nonprofit, but if you're all competing for the same monies, right. donations, it could get competitive. It right. could be like, right. you know, and, and there's there's friendly competition, like, oh, wow, they're doing this. I wish we could do that. You know, let's do that. You kind of inspire other people just from hearing about, oh, wow, they're, you know, right. there's that. But yet, you know, you still, you're still a collaborative. You're still like, oh, would you like this? You know, help me and I'll help you kind of thing. And I think that's that's important. Like because because it could get you know it could get to the point where if there's only a fixed amount in this economy and people are, or people or organizations are only able to give a certain amount of money who do they decide to give out of 40 nonprofits where do they where do they do it and I don't think we've honestly I, I'm thinking again in history I don't ever remember us um, at least it wasn't public <laughs> really arguing or talking, yeah. you know, saying, no, it's mine, it's yours. Right. We really have tried to work that out That's good. for the That's benefit. Good. That's really good. Yeah. And, and, you know, the council's been here 20 years. We, we right. celebrated our 20-year right. anniversary, anniversary last month, but I think because of that, we, we're definitely a model in the state, but as Marilyn, right. you know, just said, there there's never any, you know, it's almost decided upon where the logistical you know, who's the, the most appropriate the or logistical mm -hmm. fiduciary for it. But then many times through the collaborative, it's still funneled out for, you know, I'm thinking of different 
collaboratives that we have where you know we may get a grant or funding for a specific program but there's another entity that is specific to do that so we'll cut, right. like almost subcontract oh out I see them. oh wow. so that collaboration is well that's good that you get that flexibility you're getting, getting that I mean there's a lot of that that goes on within the council members right with that natural collaboration and partnerships that we do right. have the other thing I was going to say is the membership committee we were thinking just a couple of years ago especially when the tight budget restrictions were hitting and affecting sure. a lot of agencies. How do we capture the value uh, of this kind of entity? And in a flyer that we made at the time, there's some visuals of the example that we came up with, which was in communities in Chile, during times of real economic hardship, they mm -hmm. came up with the tradition of having a communal pot Okay. Uh, or Oya Comun, which is sort of like that stone soup story yes, that you yes. hear with and your kids, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But literally, in these impoverished communities outside the capital and in other parts uh, of the country, they began this tradition, and everyone would bring whatever they ha they could put to the, right. the pot, right. and then it would end up feeding for a meal, the community for a day with whatever li little bit. And we said, so in times of economic hardship, you could each want to grab for your piece, right? right? Or right. get some else. But instead, if you put it all together, mm -hmm. then it actually ends up nourishing everybody mm -hmm. much better. And I, mm -hmm. I, I think that's the, the kind of thing that we're talking about. And new things get generated oh, because absolutely. you're all oh, yeah. putting yeah. some, like, right? Yeah, so there's absolutely. always, so I think it's, it's not just that there's more than, but you create something new that wouldn't have happened oh, before. Yeah. I think that's, you know, what's nice, too, is that the, and I don't think it's a coincidence, that the Valley community as a whole, outside of businesses, people, how they live around here, it's the most collaborative region. I mean, Jack and I talked about, you know, what is it about this region? You've got six, you know, depending on how you define it, six or seven towns. There's, every, all across the U.S., there's six or seven towns that are neighbors, but why is it that there's such a tight community that, you know, something happens, we all band together or things like that, or it's, it's just a very unified feel. And then culturally, you mentioned earlier about some of the things you do culturally. I mean, I think, when I think culture, I think music, I think food, right. the events, church activities, religious activities, all these things that bring a community together mm -hmm. are, it's already happening. In other words, these things, I could, it just, it's almost, if we, don't, if we think about it, it would almost be a matter of time before something like this would form here because that's how the mindset of just you know a typical valley resident or a valley worker is it's already there so then to say oh we're going to work together as a business side or nonprofit side well of course you know because we're already doing that on a personal level I mean, that kind of thing so it's really nice that way yeah i think the other thing i you know we've done advocacy with our legislators and <coughs> we've had legislative breakfasts instead of having one organization do it, we come together and right, our, right. our uh, delegation really appreciates that because <laughs> of <laughs> time constraints and you know, we're basically letting them know we need more resources. Right, right. So that's been very, very effective too. And I would think too that it would, that um, you mentioned like sometimes you get funding, it's, it's specific. Right. But the fact that the funder is flexible enough, you know, well, we, we, we appreciate the funds, but it would actually be suited if we split it up. You know, some funding would be like, well, it has to go here. But if, if they're being, you know, open to that, well, that's going to be more, give you more flexibility to put it amongst different nonprofits as opposed to just a single entity. So. I think, too, one of the other values is that through our monthly meetings, we're able to provide some professional development and training on hot topics as well. Mm -hmm. For example, we have one coming up in September on emergency preparedness okay. um, for the 